Hello, Teresa here from London. I hope you're all well and that you're um, managing with all this extreme weather. It's awful, isn't it? It's very, very hot here in um, London or the UK in general. Um, we're not used to this. So a lot of us <laughs> are really are really flaking out and um, the heat yesterday I was at a funeral yesterday and the heat um, in the cemetery was unbearable it really was and I turned to one of the, the undertakers and said oh my goodness you must be boiling hot in your finery that he was wearing and he said yeah he said he was really flagging and it was only 11 o'clock in the morning but anyway I do hope that you're coping well and um, we get through it we get through a lot of things don't we globally so anyway what we're going to do lighten the mood a little bit oh no before that I'd like to say a big big hello to all our new subscribers we've got an awful lot of new subscribers recently and I'm so grateful to you all for subscribing thank you very very much and I hope you enjoy the channel and look back on some of our past art and design work um, if you enjoyed the video that brought you here then I think you'll in enjoy the rest of the videos this one is going to be a little bit of light relief I think from the last video which was quite intense and heavy going with lots of techniques going on and lots of bits and pieces to do um, but the feedback was, was great so thank you very very much this one we're going back to my favourite subject of all nature and trees I just love trees so we're going to do needle weaving now we have done some needle weaving before and this was done for an exhibition some time ago and this is needle weaving and it is such a beautiful thing to do just to sit in the chair it's quick it's easy you can get lost in it it's very mindful um, and it's just a wonderful thing to do for a little bit of you time or me time it's just lovely a little bit of music in the background so we're going to look, be looking at surface needle weaving here and actual needle weaving here with drawn threads we're going to be drawing the threads from here but leaving the threads from here so we've got two things going on here and we're going to produce some texture one of our RT elements texture and shape number two of our RT elements um, shape and line okay and some color as well so that encompasses all or almost all our RT elements in this piece all you need is some thread your nice big needle and some fabric where you can pull some of the threads out so it needs to be a nice loose weave okay so on that note I'm, I don't intend making this a long video <laughs> I hear you all saying yeah really <gasps> yeah really <laughs> but we'll see how long how long it is at the end so let's crack on and make a start and I really hope you enjoy this so the first thing to do is decide on the size of embroidery hoop that you want and uh, mine is should be nine inches yeah that's nine inches diameter which is about 23 centimeters so my fabric is slightly bigger my fabric is actually 11 inches which is 28 by 13 inches which is 33 and why it isn't square just to, to fit this um, completely is this is what I found I found this once again in the rag bag um, that's like a little treasure chest set rag bag so I found that and all I've done is zigzag around the edge to stop it fraying now if you haven't got a sewing machine you can just over sew this with nice big 
stitches just one strand of sewing and thread all the way round and that will stop it fraying so I'm now going to place that in the center place the hoop in the center of the fabric and with a nice well this is actually a green crayon I'm just going to draw around the inside to do the outside if you want I'm not going to press too heavy just so I can see it right now this will be my guide for drawing the fabric oh lovely you can see that on here okay now if we go back to the example we can see that there are lines here where the fabric has been withdrawn and you can see the background poking through you see the green there which is fabric that's been placed underneath the red hessian or burlap so this is what we're going to do now we're going to be guided by our inspiration the trees uh, if I remember I'll, I'll put the picture up here okay so we're going to be guided now by the picture of the trees now we want some of these but thinking about our contrast our elements we want some narrow and we want some thick there you see how lovely and thick that one is then we want some long and then some short which takes me back to these here two short ones there's another short one there okay so bear in mind the contrast while you do this now withdrawing the thread is quite easy to do you're just going to start let's say for sake of argument I'm going to start here and all you're going to do is to lift the thread out now ideally we want a quick unpick and you need to break the thread somewhere okay now before you do that decide on the length you want now I'm going to take a I'm going to take one right the way down here for the width of a large tree trunk now I'm going to start in the middle and break that thread that's broken lovely in fact I'm going to break four five I'm going to break six I think that's five actually what have I got there one two three four five six come that way oh goodness I've got the wrong glasses on for this now you're just going to run these back now you could do this with a needle just bring them all the way back so you're exposing the warp um, doesn't really matter on this because <laughs> it's even weave it's an open even weave so there isn't really a warp and a weft so it doesn't matter which way you're looking at it I'm just put, oh this is such a nice thing to do so you're just going to pull these back all the way down here there we go it's not quite at the circle there get at the circle there and stop and we're going to do the same up here take it all the way back to the other side of the circle and stop so and this is just so easy maybe about every inch maybe um, probably not longer than an inch 2.5 centimeters and it's quite easy to pull out right the way down there across the center there we go now that is across as well at the circle so that is the first the first line now the way we deal with these oh I've got two there oh that's handy I've pulled two out of this. So, smashing so the way we deal with these we now tuck these threads in 
Right, if I just, I'm just, oh gosh, I'm on a roll now. This, oh, this is lovely. Oh, just pull that out. And you can see already how that's taking shape. All right. Now, with a big needle, a darning needle, something that's going to go th through here. Right, now, I'm going to thread these up, these, these strands here. You could actually shorten it as well, because that's a bit of a long, a long thread to be pulling about. So I'm just going to shorten that. And then with this, I'm going to just work away from the circle and just weave it in a couple of these like that and these will get lost in what will be the underneath so there you go so that's the first one woven in and chopped off and do exactly the same I'll make it shorter first this time I'm going to do this with all the threads so, so try and keep your needle when you're looking for your needle to do this try and find a blunt one you don't want a sharp point because that's just going to make it di more difficult for you because the, the sh <coughs> excuse me the sharp needle will start to pick up will get entangled in the background in this fabric here so there we are you can see that oh, where are we I'm off the camera right there we are here now I'm going to do this this procedure I'm going to, to do this all the way along here so I get these nice lines like so okay all the way along and I'm uh, as I said I'm going to be guided by the picture or by the photograph and I want some of these areas the areas that aren't going to have the threads removed I want to keep some of them thick and some of them thin to provide a lovely contrast okay so I'm going to carry on with that and it really is a nice thing to do but just before I I, um, I stop or I carry on off camera I'm just going to show you if you don't have any burlap or hessian have a look round in your rag bag and see what you have got this is something I started some time ago I haven't got around to finish it obviously as you can see but I managed to pull out, withdraw some of the threads on this, this fabric here. Now I needed to frame this because it is exceptionally frameable. So I've, I've sewn a frame around here. So by tugging it about, I'm not going to actually stretch or um, fray this too much. So you can see here, um, I've just put the needle down, I can't find it, look, here, you can see how this can be used for needle weaving, okay, so that was that, that's that one, so don't worry if you haven't got any um, hessian burlap, see what you have got and see if you have a loose fabric where you can withdraw the fabric uh, the threads now this is a nice one as well and it is very loose if I, I think if I hold that up to the screen you might even be able to see my fingers behind it you can see how loose that is maybe on the, you see my thumb or my finger poking through so this was really easy to withdraw the threads um, and this will be really nice to work on you see that and then just group the stitches together for the needle weaving and I really like this one so I'm going to pop those away because that's for another day meanwhile I'm going to carry on with this and as soon as I've I've um, done as many as I need 
I'll get back and I'll show it to you before I start sewing it. I've now removed all the threads that I'm going to remove and already I think it's giving the um, impression of tree trunks lots of tree trunks in a forest um, and I just love that effect now the next thing to do you need a, ne a needle with a large eye oops large eye and blunt and I'm using six strands of embroidery thread okay so it's going to be nice and thick and then we're going to make some shapes in these gaps here where I've withdrawn all the threads this is where we're going to start and we're going to start making our threads now there is actually a right and a, a right and a wrong way of doing needle weaving if you were to do this on a piece of linen um, on a wedding dress or, or something where you need a consistent pattern this is worked in blocks but because we don't follow the rules um, and this is a textile art <laughs> we break those rules and we do what we want to do so I'm going to start here now I'm looking that way but I need to show you how to do it this way so um no, just bear with me so I'm going to start here at the side okay and I have knotted it now with a, an open weave a loose weave like this you have to be careful not to bring the knot through not to pull it through so I'm just going to do a tiny over sew stitch at the end here just to make sure that I don't pull the thread out it's just so easy to pull out the thread on this type of fabric there that's fine now all I'm going to do is group the needle we these threads here so we'll now call these the warp threads the exposed warp threads I'm going to group these just as I want so I'm going to start off and I'm going to come up between the threads and just wrap the needle through it we have done this before um, and it really is lovely I think that might be a problem and as you can see you do need to um, do this in a hoop so and now I'm going over this side and I'm just going to group an, another I've got th I'm actually doing three at the moment three together there so already just for doing two stitches there's a shape let me get that right away just for doing two little stitches there's a shape emerging already and I'm going to go back over there I'm just going to just group these now just as I want to there we go now I might decide to come over here and start another shape you can take as many as you like this time I'm going to go over four and this is all you're going to do all the way down you're just going to group these and just more or less what you're doing is tying them together so I'm going to go back down this way and the nice thing about this you never know what you're going to get at the end of it how it's going to look so yeah I like that shape so I'm now going to come over here and I'm just going to take two this time now wrap the thread around it um, now I'm going to go back and just take two from the next one and I'm going to carry on like this all the way along and then you can go back and you can do some more here and you're just going to pull pull the warps any way that you want to create some lovely shapes like here um, where am I I'm off the camera whoops like nice big shapes different sizes and all you're doing 
is doing that by weaving, wrapping the thread around groups, wrapping your embroidery thread around the groups of warp threads. Okay, it's very, very easy. There are no secrets to this. But once you get the hang of it, <laughs> you might find it takes over your life. So I should carry on. And as soon as I've made a headway, I'll get back and um, I'll, I'll show you. I did intend to stop halfway through this to show you how far I've got, but I completely forgot. I just carried on and carried on. And this really doesn't take very long. You can have this done in a couple of hours, depending on how fast you work. But um, as it's just such a nice thing to do that you get absorbed in it and it becomes very, very mindful. But I'm just going to go through what I've done. I have just carried on doing what I did earlier on, just more or less on here, which is almost a, tradi a traditional way of doing drawn thread work. It's just tying groups of threads together. That's all, just like a back stitch, going over groups of thread and securing them that way to there. And if you can see, I'll make this a bit bigger and then you'll catch the patterns. And as you can see here, it forms a regular pattern. Well, I don't really want too many regular patterns. That is just, funnily enough, how it fell. So I went with it. Um, there's another one here that I didn't go with. Now, where is that one? That one. I didn't go with that one. I've shaken that one up a little bit. I didn't want too many regular patterns on the work. So this I used exactly the same, like a big back stitch grouping the, the threads. I did the same here, but I just altered it on one of the rows. And that is why we have this irregular pattern. But, oh, my neighbour going out. <laughs> but here we have some patterns that have, ha have happened naturally because of the pulling of of the scrim of a hessian burlap to some um, carries on here here the needle weaving here and that's pulling groups of thread but actually weaving under and over and under and over so these are needle weaving this is like a drawn thread I mean some of these are made up so you can't do this wrong so don't don't think you need to stick to a, a pattern or some sort of prescription. You don't. You do what you want to do and see what you end up with. Make it up as you go along. So, as I just said, some of these are made up. Um, and here we have a little bit of playing around, actually. A little bit of needle weaving here and some grouping there. It's almost like tying the, the threads. Now, I did start off with the green. And it didn't take me long to realise. I don't think green was going to work. So I changed to brown, but didn't like to take this out. So that is why that's still there. At some point, I'll have to bring the green over here just to make a nice um, pleasing balance to the eye, I think. Now, the top bit, this bit, is finished. I'm not going to withdraw any more. What I am going to do is what I did here. Now, it's getting very difficult to see this. What I did here, I introduced some wool and the wool pulled tightly produced these shapes here. Okay, right, so this, I'm just going to run, uh, I think I'm going to do a back stitch along here. Right, let's make sure you can see. I've made it big enough so you can see. I've made a really big knot in the back, but I'm keeping my finger, ooh, where are we? The finger here on the knot at the back so I don't pull it through. And I'm going to do big back stitch. You could do running stitch if you like. And then I'm pulling it and it's making its own shape here. I haven't withdrawn any threads. Now, what I'm doing here, I'm being guided by the group, the grouping 
on the previous row and it's forming a pattern if you can see that so um, all right, I didn't intend for that to happen actually but hey ho it's happened so it can stay and that is now being formed just with um, the looseness of the background fabric and there we go now we also have the contrast here between the thick sorry off the camera between the thick wide shape here we call that a trunk the thick wide trunk there against this the little narrow twig like tree here so I'm going to make this one a bit longer so we also get the long which this one will be against the short here and against the short here right now I have a feeling at this point I'm just going to finish all this surface the surface um, stitchery if you like I'm going to pull that down right those are now my tree trunks the inspiration was tree trunks anyway and in between doing this I went to look for some fabric and I found my Victorian stroke Edwardian postcards and amongst them I found another um, tree, uh, tree inspired picture and I'll blow this up and you'll be able to see the thickness against the thin and it gets all the twiggy shapes here and I really like this so and it's also got the green here in the corner um, that I've kept so this is uh, you know, a real dead ringer for what I'm actually doing I think but anyway I'm going to carry on I'm not sure now what I'm going to do now these spaces here are just lovely they're crying out <laughs> to be filled <laughs> and that could be with stitches or it could be with beads but look how lovely they are I just can't leave those I'm just going to put this here and you, you might get a better look at the shapes I'm not sure if that makes any difference to how you're seeing it on the screen or maybe a little bit oh I don't know yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that's a deep enough colour. Oh, no, it's better off on the on the worksheet, isn't it? Anyway, so I'm going to hang this up on the wall for a while and um, see what needs to be done next. But I do. So here's a, a quick update. It won't take too long. I've done some surface stitchery here through the, the holes that's been made by pulling the fabric this stitch is just a running stitch um, this stitch is a running stitch too there the same here and here um, there there and there and this one I particularly like this one as well and the yellow so as you can see that really didn't take very very long at all I was tempted to cover this up but I thought no I'm going to leave that as I explained before and introduce some green um, very soon actually so I'm inclined to think at the moment this is finished the withdrawn work is finished and it's time now to think about the needle weaving on the surface now I'll just take you back to this one and the needle weaving here has done exactly the same here the grouping of strands of thread together but the threads are laid on the top and in each group there's possibly about six to ten warp threads 
Okay, maybe just six to ten wool threads, just laid across like you're doing a satin stitch. So from underneath, across and through the fabric, and then the same back and back until you end up with like a little loom, if you like. And then you're going to do exactly as you did here. You see here the way these are grouped together, just under and over, literally weaving with your needle, needle weaving, and making patterns and shapes like here. So some areas, some of these warps, I'm just going to make this bigger, some of the warps here have actually been left bare. You see there? And here, well you can see where, where they've been left. Um, and that makes another nice shape. The idea is to make shapes and texture. So I varied the wool here, a nice I've no idea what this wool is, uh, a nice zigzaggy wool um, set against a thicker wool here and a very fine wool there and another um, zigzag or woolly wool there and some cotton there, quite thick cotton and I'm sure there's string here somewhere, that is possibly, yeah that looks like a string there and that is very fine a very fine thread and that makes a texture so it gives you interest with the texture it also gives you interest with the shapes but not only those shapes but here as well so you have a lot of shapes going on here you've got the negative shapes and you have the positive shapes as well so there's a it's very busy so um, it's <laughs> very colourful and it's busy so it encompasses quite a lot of our design elements now I'm going to start on here but unlike this one I'm going to introduce a little bit more texture by just adding in occasional places something for interest and then needle weaving over so for instance I might place piece of lace there or a piece of lace there and then put the warp threads on top of that and then needle weave now I'm not definite what I'm doing yet this is just thinking aloud maybe some lace there and some lace maybe a piece there or I might want some of this showing through so I might make it narrower and I might even take some of these round pieces out so I have half of the hessian showing through I was also very tempted as well <laughs> to weave through some of these but I thought no I'm going to leave that to the end and if I still have this overwhelming urge <laughs> to weave through some of these I might take the plunge but just for the moment I'm going to have a look at these little pieces here that I have oh that's pretty and that keeps in with the, with the um, theme of trees and growth um, I've got any more of those I've got all sorts of things here I've got a flower head there but no I don't think so so I'll have another look see what I have got there this from a doily but I'm going to play around and then I'll make a start on this and then I'll get back once again as soon as I've made um, substantial progress <laughs> or not <laughs> depending on your idea of progress okay <laughs> so I'm going to sit here for ages now and work this out and hopefully it'll be quite nice in a couple of minutes time when so I get there. I've now laid these down and I just want to show you how I'm going to start the needle weaving um, I'll hold that I'm just going to move that around just a little bit so you can see exactly what I've put on the back end and it's mostly lace there and there there's some net here that has um, sequins already sewn on that if I move that about you can just see them on the screen and that piece I've already showed you but this is a piece of fabric 
and that was literally on the desk here and it's got a nice little shine to it if you can see that but I'm going to start here with this one nice length of fabric now I'm using a big needle so you can see it because this is a demonstration big needle I'm going to push that pin down just a little bit in fact I'm going to take that pin out now I'm going to come through from the back like this I've got six strands in here I haven't stranded it at all I've just left it as the six now I'm going to just put lay these on the top and make this bigger right I'm going to lay this on the top now and just take it down here they don't all have to be the same length you decide what length you want them you might want a long one then you might want a short one up here now just put down as many warps and um, remember that the warp thread goes down and the weft goes across so you're going to put down oops as many as you like you might only want a couple or you might want to fill that space completely and don't worry about them if you don't get them straight because it really doesn't matter by the time you've grouped them and pulled them like this no one's going to know if they were straight or not so I'll pop that one there I think I might just leave this as full um, now I'll get another one in and I think I'll get a little one in a shorter one there and finish it there so your warp threads are now down so you're just going to come through doesn't matter where you start this is for fun you're going to make some more shapes and some textures you're going to do what you did here on these other shapes you're just going to weave so over one under the next one back on itself so over and under over and under so just as if you were doing a piece of weaving it's exactly the same principle now you've done you've done that many and you might want now to make a shape so you might want to go over two and under two so you're going to go over two and under two you can do exactly what you want you, the pattern that you do is entirely up to you but it is great fun and as you can see now the shapes are beginning to to form different shapes are forming already so I'm going to stretch this over here and over over that one there's only one there so I'm going over and then under and I might take this through the next one and then just continue like this until you get the effect that you want now if you pull it in too much and you get a waste don't worry you can gently pull that out and just pop a little stitch in the side and take that through to the back like that and then you've altered the spacing okay but as I say it is entirely up to you how you do this just keep bearing in mind it's it is weaving so over and under there but whether you work in blocks or do do it like I'm doing that's up to you too Oh, and it is just such a lovely thing to do so I'm going to carry on like this and I shall do it in silk the embroidery thread this um, and some wool to give it an extra texture so the next time you see this hopefully these might be done well I hope so 
it's it's something they're very quick to do. It's it's very satisfying because you get immediate results. Well, <clears throat> I've done far more than I intended to do, but I'm calling it finished now because I really don't think the fabric can take the strain of another stitch. I'll quickly go through what I've done. Um, this is a whipped running stitch in wool. Uh, what else? I put the lace down as I explained previously and I did three lots of surface needle weaving here to make some really nice shapes and I've used brown wool, just ordinary regular double knitting wool. I've added crosses or some um, cross stitch here um, and around here and down here and I really had to stop myself down here and I just wanted to carry on with it but I thought no no I'm going to stop there the black is intentional and I thought it might tone down some of the brighter areas but I don't think it has actually so surface needle weaving over the lace here and over that piece of fabric that is shiny the shiny uh, fabric that is chain stitch along there uh, what have we got? Whipped running stitch here. Was that over anything? Yes, that's over lace. Surface stitchery. Uh, sorry, surface needle weaving over lace. And just to finish it off, a, a small row of uh, chain stitch just to bring that all together so I'm actually calling it finished now although I'm looking at this thinking oh I could fill it in a bit there and a bit here but I really want to keep some of these lovely shapes here I'm going to make this bigger for a second so you can actually see what's going on close up now the white paper underneath is just to show you that the shapes that have been made by just pulling threads together in groups or in little bundles so there's some really lovely shapes here now to exploit these shapes or to exaggerate them remember that two of our words are exaggeration or exaggerate and eliminate or elimination so you exaggerate the areas you like eliminate those you don't so I wanted to exaggerate these so I've, I've just left them um, but these wonderful big big holes these big gaps here these negative shapes um, are just ideal for placing something nice underneath just to exaggerate those shapes so I've spent some time uh, looking through the stash bits and pieces and I came up with these now once again as always this is all I have and as you can see here it's um, a hanger that was given to me little fabric hang hanger just this and these so I spent some time just popping them underneath just to have a look to see what sort of effect it would give now I'll make that bigger again. I don't know why I made it smaller then. There was no need, was there? So, and I just think these pick out some of the colours nicely. And they're also linear as well to reflect the lines of the trees here. So before I do that, the next thing to do is to make a template of this size or shape and we want the inner ring we don't want the size of the outer ring we want the inner ring to get a yeah. piece of paper the size that you want your ring that fits nicely here this is just a little bit short but you can you can add a bit or you can bend it in half fold it over and just do half and that's how I did this actually I just did this to there and then opened it up and I had the full circle so if you're going to do it well you, you do it the same way either so if you're not going to fold it you just put your paper in there and just with your finger 
just mark the inside of your ring like so and when you remove it you have your circle there and if, of course if it's in half you'll open it up and you'll have your circle so there's your circle then from that I cut that out and I cut from an Amazon box I cut two circles and you can see the box here front and back there we are there's the box I cut the two circles out and I, I glued them together I've decided I'm going to use this fabric underneath because it just looks lovely underneath you can just see gliss the glistening gold here and the glistening brown through these lovely holes now at this stage I need to take that off like so don't worry about the ring marks there and I need to place this over here and I'm going to cut around there now where's that now if you don't destroy your template you could cut around that or you could just do what I'm going to do just so just loosely cut around the edge give it about an inch allowance and that will make the next step quite a bit easier to do so just around there doesn't really matter how big you make it it's going to be folded over anyway right now at this stage I'm just going to use some glue and loosely more or less just tack it into place but you don't have to be too precise at this this moment okay so just fold these over you could do this with sellotape double sided sellotape in fact, I think I might have to do that. I'm not sure this fabric is going to stick. No, I don't. Oh, it will do, yeah. So I'll stick this all the way round. Now, while the glue's drying on the board, I've just trimmed around the edge of the, here, around the edge of the design, taken away the excess fabric which is mostly the corners and I've left about an inch all the way around the edge and now I'm just going to do a small stitch about half an inch from the actual finish of the stitching a small running stitch all the way round in a nice strong thread now as you can see here I am using a black wool the same black wool that I used for the cross stitching here I've put a lovely knot big strong knot in the back and I'm now just going to go all the way round with this stitch now this is where it gets fun you're going to take your board oh that's come undone a little bit right take this and lead the needle in with a nice length of thread and you're going to put this where you want it edge to edge with the stitching okay right now I need to know those lines are I want the lines going the same way as these so that is that way lovely now once you're you're sure that it's edge to edge and where you want it what you're going to do is just pull up your thread this is why you need a strong thread to do this pulling so pull it all just like a drawstring all the way round and you might want to pull from the knotted end as well so I'm going to break that knot there
and pull from that end as well. Lovely. Now you need to pull it tightly. You don't want any slack, so make sure it's nice and taut all the way around and then secure these together. I'm going to cut that there. Right, make sure that is secure, so I shall double knot that, lovely, there, and here you can just pull it into a little bit more shape. That's that. Now, you could finish it here with a piece of um, fabric, piece of felt. You could cut a nice piece of felt here and you could glue it down or you could, you could sew it down. Uh, you could have a little bit more fabric if you have a lot of that. You could just sew it around. You don't have to sew it but you could do. I'm trying to find something round but I'm not, I'm not <laughs> like this. <laughs> so if you cut a circle like this you could just pop it down and glue it down just to hide this bit. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to lace it just to secure it a little bit more. And all that means is like this one, and I've actually removed the paper, the backing from this, so you can see what the lacing is. And it's just securing it from one side over, a bit like a star, so you're securing that shape. Right, so once again with your nice strong thread, make sure you knot it, otherwise you'll do what I've just done and pull it through. So just to make sure, I'm going to start with a couple of over sewing stitches to lock it. That's it, that is nice and secure then now and just go over from side to side picking up this now you can do this on all sorts of um, all sorts of things that you mount this is mounting and um, and you can do this on the back of lots and lots of things that you mount. And it gives them a really nice finish. That's finished now. I don't need any more pieces of thread across here. That is lovely and firm. Um, it's, that's just really nice and secure. So this is now the front, the finished front. And I'm finishing this here now. I don't need to mount this, but if you didn't want to finish yours here, but wanted to mount it further, you could cut a piece of square a square piece of board bigger than this bigger than your circle and then you would do exactly the same mount it mount the fabric exactly the same as we've done here and then place this in the center or wherever you'd like it and secure that now you can secure that with some small stitches <clears throat> or you could glue that glue it in place and, and then you have a nicely mounted 
circle on a square and it looks really effective. I'm just going to give you a rough idea. I really don't want to do mine. I, I want to finish mine here. But it does look quite effective mounted on a square. Oh no, I don't want to do anything that I'm I'm going to like and feel feel the need to carry on. Um like that or yes, I think it would look better on a background. Yes, it would, wouldn't it? Oh I'm going to save that for another day. But anyway, that is finished now. So we have two here. The finished piece. Uh, inspirational piece and uh, overall inspiration from the trees the spacing between the trees the shapes the negative shapes between the branches and the trunks and this here you can see the shapes they're just gorgeous all different negative shapes okay and that was the last one as well um, from the postcard that I found and you can see all the shapes as well from these so I do hope you enjoyed that it was a little bit different wasn't it but um, after the the, other, the last project which was a bit heavy I thought this would be a nice nice light relief with the needle weaving and just what was it chain stitch, running stitch whipped running stitch French, no, we didn't do French knots. Ah, no French knots. Um, but we did cross stitch. And was there anything else? Chain, did it say chain? So about five stitches. Five of the stitches that we're used to using. So no problem there. So I do hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, perhaps you'd like to subscribe. And um, I look forward to hearing your comments down below or on the Facebook group okay so all take care and um, whatever weather that you're experiencing at the moment if you're having floods fire which is really really frightening as well or extreme heat please look after yourself and I'll get back to you shortly bye